In this video, we will investigate one-sided limits. Let's recall the definition of limit. Given a function f of x defined at points near x equals c, we say that the limit of f of x as x approaches c equals l if, when values of x are close to c, f of x, the output, is close to l and to no other number. Suppose we have the graph of y equals g of x, a piecewise defined function. Let's evaluate the limit of g of x as x approaches 2. In this particular case, the limit of g of x as x approaches 2 does not exist. Instead, we can look at what happens when x is close to 2 and x is less than 2. And from a number line perspective, we're approaching 2 from the left. So in this case, when x is close to 2 and x is less than 2, g of x is close to 1. And we write that the limit of g of x as x approaches 2 from the left, which we denote with that little negative sign, the limit is equal to 1. And we say that g has a left-handed limit at x equals 2. When x is close to 2 and x is greater than 2, so from a number line perspective, we're approaching 2 from the right, g of x, the output, is close to 3. And we write that the limit of g of x as x approaches 2 from the right, denoted with the little plus sign, is equal to 3. And we say that g has a right-handed limit at x equals 2. Since the two one-sided limits are not equal, we say that the limit of g of x as x approaches 2 does not exist. So here we have an example where the two one-sided limits both exist, but the limit of g of x as x approaches 2 itself does not exist. So in other words, in order for a limit to exist, the left-handed limit must equal the right-handed limit. And when those two one-sided limits are equal, we say that the limit of g of x as x approaches c exists and is equal to that limit l. Let's consider another example. Suppose we have the graph of y equals f of x given by this graph here, and we want to know the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2. Let's again consider each of the one-sided limits. Let's consider the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 from the left. We want to consider values of x close to negative 2 and x less than negative 2. What is f of x close to? Well, we see that as x is approaching and getting closer to negative 2 from the left, f of x is getting closer to 3. And so we can write that the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 from the left is equal to 3. Let's consider the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 from the right. So we're looking at what happens to f of x when x is closer to negative 2 and x is greater than negative 2. And we can see that the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 from the right is also equal to 3. So therefore the two one-sided limits, the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 from the left and the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 from the right are equal. So therefore the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 exists and is equal to 3 as well. And we, we can refer back to the definition of limit that says when x is close to negative 2, then f of x is close to positive 3. Now in this particular case, we can note that the limit itself is not actually equal to the function evaluated at negative 2. The limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2, as we stated, is 3, but the function evaluated at negative 2 is equal to 1. Just a reminder that when we're evaluating the limit of f of x as x approaches c, the value of the function at c itself is irrelevant. The function evaluated at c has no effect on the limit.